The next step you want to take before you continue is to reinforce the edge of the mask. Um, so you want to get yourself some more plaster cloth and get it in the water. This is usually something that happens the day after you've done the first part of the mask work. So the mask is pretty dry and you're going to just reinforce this by taking a piece of plaster cloth and wrapping it around this edge and gently putting it into place with your finger. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it to stick to the inside because of the Vaseline, but you can do it. And then run a finger back over that surface to bring that plaster up to the surface and get it as smooth as possible. So to do this one, I'm just going to do this outer edge. If I have a mask that has unique features, like eye openings or something like that, I'm going to want to cut small pieces of plaster and very carefully reinforce uh, all these edges. This is still a little bit weak because this is pretty thin. So I want to reinforce that and do a good job of making the mask pretty strong <clears throat> so that I can continue to work on it. Once I've gotten it to that point, it's ready. It's time for me to apply some smoothing compound. Now I'm going to do that only if I'm going to go from here and make a mask that's just on the mold like this. Let's say I did this mask and I was ready to put the smoothing on it and I was ready to paint it after that. I wasn't going to do any other construction. Then I'm going to do the smoothing compound. I'm going to do that in a second, but first I'm going to show you if you want to add things to your mask like features like this. This is a piece of cardboard that I cut. I cut it to match the surface curve at the top of the mask. I can give you cardboard and you can create a shape on here that you want with a pencil and then bring it to me and I will cut it very carefully with my razor to make it fit and then you can apply it. Now you can see that this piece was applied by putting plaster cloth into place, bandaging it onto the mask on the front and on the back and that's in place really well. This is quite solid, pr pretty good. I've left part of it off to show you the building process. I would eventually cover this entire thing with two coats of plaster cloth and then when I was ready I would go on to do my smoothing. There's also other possibilities. This is one that, I, that a number of students have done over the years, a star or moon shape figure. If you wanted to do something like this that was outside the surface of the mask on the outer circumference, I can give you a piece of cardboard. You can draw what you want and we'll cut the circle part out here. That allows us to attach it to the inside of the mask as well. We would apply plaster cloth. We would cover all of this cardboard with two coats of plaster cloth. We would plaster it to the inside of the mask as well. This also gives us a good place to attach a wire for hanging it on the wall. This mask is also a good opportunity to show you that you can build onto the mask using the plaster. That's, there's a limit to what you can do with that. You can build on things like eyeballs. This one has some eyeballs that were built onto it, kind of show you from the side what that looks like. And that's just plaster cloth that's got, gotten wet and balled up and applied directly to the surface of the mask. There's a certain amount that you can do by building up the plaster like that and you can't get it much bigger than a certain amount. Little features like this, little horns and other features, glasses, things that you want to build onto the surface can be done using that technique. Here's another example of building the plaster in a particular way without actually laying the plaster onto the mold flat. This student used the mold but took the plaster and rolled it into kind of beaded strings and then interlaced them together to make this really interesting um, mask that you can see through. It's like a web, very nicely handled um, material doing it that way. So you can, you can build certain things on with plaster, but they can't be really big. You can also make larger features if you want to by using construction of tag board. So this is a piece of tag board that I've cut up into these various shapes and then I've taped it together with masking tape. This would be, for instance, if I wanted to do something, let's say I wanted to do a, a big bird that had a big beak on it. I could take a piece like this and I could attach it to the surface, to the front of the mask in the same manner that I did this by using plaster cloth to bandage it in place. That's how I did this mask right here, which has this big prominent kind of beak feature on the front of it. This piece was made out of, card, uh, out of uh, tag board like this, taped together. 
then attached to the surface of the mask. The whole thing was covered with plaster cloth, two coats, and then the smoothing compound was applied to that, and then it was painted. And you can see that mask has these interesting features. This mask also has horns. The way to make horns, the easiest way to make horns, is to get a piece of newspaper and roll it into a kind of a cone shape and then you can cover it with masking tape. So I, I actually took, these horns were made this way. Started with a piece of newspaper like this. I kind of crumpled it up and I flattened it out and I covered it with masking tape. The entire thing, totally covered it with masking tape. That allowed me to kind of shape it to a certain shape and I was then able to attach it to the mask with the plaster cloth. There's a little bit of a trick to this. You have to be able to attach that plaster cloth and let that thing sit for a little bit so that it, the plaster cloth has a chance to dry. And there are all kinds of tricks that you can use to kind of uh, help hold things in place, like taking you know, another mold or anything that will work to hold something in place and use that uh, to plaster it in place and let that plaster sit let it dry out, and then once that's attached, then you can cover the whole thing with more plaster. It's building in stages as you go, letting the plaster harden, and then continuing on from there. Once you've done all of your construction, let's say you've added all of your 3D stuff that you want to, everything is covered with plaster cloth, or let's say you're just doing a Spider-Man mask, for instance, and you have this and you want to just smooth this off and paint the mask, now you're ready to do the smoothing compound. The smoothing compound is actually what we call, I call it smoothing compound for this project. It's actually joint compound, it's wallboard compound. If you've ever seen a house or had your house renovated, it's the stuff they put in between the panels of wallboard when they make a new wall to, uh, to seal the seams and then they put some special tape on that and they put this stuff on top of that to smooth it all off to make it look like it's all one big fat, uh, flat surface. So this is in a box on the front counter. I'll show you where it is. You have to get a little bit. You don't need a lot. You're going to start with a little bit. Your tool to apply this is one finger, not your entire hand, a single finger, okay? And your goal is to get it on as smooth as you can in thin coats, multiple thin, smooth coats of this, one at a time, and then you need to let it dry. So I'm going to apply this. I'm just going to apply a little bit so you can see what it looks like because it's starting to fill the rough texture of the plaster cloth. Remember, it's a thin coat that's the key here. Don't gob huge amounts of this on. You're just creating another rough surface if you do that. You want to do a thin, smooth coat like this. And then you want to let that dry. And when you let that dry for about 10 minutes or so, it's going to get kind of a, a skin on it. And you can go back over it again with a wet finger and it's going to make it really, really slick and smooth. But the key, again, is multiple thin, smooth coats of this stuff. Once you've done that, <clears throat> then you have a totally smooth surface, like this surface before the paint was put onto it. And it's much easier to do fine painting. So if you want to do something like this, where you paint and you paint very specific areas, and then this, the black lines were actually done with a Sharpie, you're going to have a much smoother surface to work with. So you want to, again, multiple thin smooth coats, one finger like this, and you're going to coat the entire mask. You're going to let that dry for about 10 minutes, and then you're going to go back over it again with a wet finger and try to slick it down and make it as smooth as possible.